I want to thank God for the faithfulness and grace of God. When they want to give me a home name, they say my own are grace and te angama. Since that time, grace of God continue. And all of us know what grace of God mean. Now, uh, this uh, Friday when it passed, one of my home sister, driver, original baby girl. <laughs> Remember, me, the other one driver. August, the other one driver. The same one said, I want to return glory for my God. No operation, no hindrance. Shout sharp, then just the driver. Hallelujah. God will give you your own original testimony in the name of Jesus. Listen to this other documented testimony. This of generational cause will remain in my life. After this service, no trace of generational cause will remain in my life. After this service, no trace of generational cause will remain in my destiny. After this service, no trace of generational cause will remain in my life after this service I am going home with my full scale liberty I am going home with my full scale liberty no trace of generational cause will remain in my life after this service no trace of generational cause we haunt my future again we haunt my destiny again no trace blessed be your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed after this service, whatever limitation you have suffered today, it will be wiped away. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Whatever limited you from your family line must let you go after this service. Amen. Make that amen bigger. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Tell your neighbor welcome into generational blessings. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. I like to remind us That operation by all means is a reality. I know you will not say amen because you have not been involved. It's because you have not been coming, that's why you can't say amen. But you know, God is able to say with a few. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Everything God says is to move us forward. But it will only require those that will comply to this instruction to experience the forward movement. When you are too busy for God and his instruction, studio, I like us to put that scripture so that someone, as I'm talking, I'm pointing you to the scripture. Proverbs chapter 1. Let's read it from verse 23. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my word unto you. Verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you shall set at naught all my counsel and will none of my reproof. 
I also will laugh at your calamity and will mock when your fear comes. The next verse, when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a wild wind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call up on me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they will none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways and be filled with their own devices. Don't play smartness with God because nothing give you brain. Operation by armies is less than three weeks now. It's just 20 days from now. 20 days from now. Please, let's give it all it takes. No matter what you are doing now, you will need God. You will need God's help. You will need God's impute. Claiming you are, that you are too busy for uh, outreach on Thursday, on Saturday, is a deception. Because wherever you are now, God placed you there. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Scripture says he sets up king and bring down another. Don't give yourself too much excuse that we excuse you out of future blessings. Whatever you have seen now is a tip of what is ahead. Don't allow what you are seeing now deny you of what is ahead. Don't say you don't have time. Time never created itself. You fix it. Are you hear what I'm saying now? You didn't create time. Fix and fi the moment you fix it, you will you will you will be involved. Don't say I don't have time. Every time I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. When will you have time? If they call you now that seven o'clock, you must be in Abuja to collect ten million. You will even know that there is a arm robber on the road. You say, I'm entering and they go, man. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? You will hit the road. <laughs> you will hit the road, though. I'm telling you the truth. You will hit the road. Say, driver, make sure you are there at 4 a.m. We must reach Abuja before 7. Praise God. Please, let's get this thing done. It's our father's house. But I want to let you know, the church is marching forward. Amen. I said the church is marching forward. Amen. So the remaining days to October 7, we are, we are increasing our momentum in prayer, in everything. But I want to let you know, we will hit our target. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Breaking generational causes. We are going to take it in three different dimensions. This service we are going to be breaking the yoke of foundational and generational poverty. And second service we are going to be taking breaking the yoke of foundational and family limitation and in the third service we are going to be breaking the siege over your destiny I like to begin by saying that causes are not destiny friendly. No cause is a friend to your destiny. Causes are enemies of destiny fulfillment. Causes squeezes destiny.
causes suffocates destiny. Whether you know it or not, it is either a cause is at work in your life, in your family, in your career, in your business, or a blessing is at work. The signs will be obvious what is at work. Causes have power to limit potentials. It opens up the door of struggles. It is like a man using a bicycle to climb a mountain. When a course is at work, you will be putting in much, but no result to show. When a course is at work, Sorrow become multiplied. In fact, the presence of a cause is the breeding ground of sorrow. Causes create consistent disappointments. You move from one obstacle and graduate to another obstacle. When a cause is at work, Others will be sharing testimonies. You'll be telling them sufferings, disappointments. A cause at work in the life of a man or a woman makes his life pitiable and not enviable. There is nothing to envy in the life of a cost man or a cost woman. Now, I'd like us to understand also that causes are inherited. And that is why they are generational. When a cause is transferred from your great-grandfather to your grandfather to your father, it has now become a generational lineage, a generational cause. It is visible. It is traceable. You can see it. You can trace it. That is why generational causes are foundational in nature. It troubles our foundation. And scripture says, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? A faulty foundation does not give opportunity for easy rising. Every human based operation has a foundation. I have a foundation, you have a foundation. You didn't fall from the moon, you came from a family. The foundation talks about the platform on which your parents came from and the route through which you are coming from. That is why foundational patterns, they, they show us our personal genesis. Our personal genesis. Everybody has a personal genesis. So no matter how much you pray for things to happen, if your foundation cannot sustain it, you are in trouble. That's why some will say, I pray, 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 pray. No. Trace it to your foundation. Trace it to your foundation. That is why dealing with your foundation is giving you opportunity are giving an opportunity for your destiny to rise well.
So no one is exempted from foundational implication. Why? Because there are powers that relates us to our foundation, to our destiny. So, I believe God that the issues of generational poverty will be dealt with in your life permanently. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. I remember when we were doing engineering foundation and structure in my third year. Our lecturer talked about grouting. So he was only drawing diagrams on the board. I say, as after the class, I followed him. I said, I didn't understand it. Show me in the book. So he now opened the book. Now, there are some buildings that are sitting on unstable foundation. And when a building is sitting on an unstable foundation, no matter how high the building is, it has the capacity to collapse. So he was teaching us that if they have the technology, the foundation can be stabilized. So they will go to a deep length and they will be firing liquid cement to consolidate the bottom. They will mark a circumference around the building and be firing the thing round. The building won't collapse. It will not touch the, this thing. Just to give it solidity. Now what we are about doing is liking to it. We are going to give our destiny solidity. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Dealing with your foundation is to enable you to rise well. Rise well. A cause creates misfortune. A cause man can never be fortunate. Can never be fortunate. So it's better we deal with this thing now so that we will not transfer liabilities to our children. Proverbs 13 verse 22, a good man liveth an inheritance for his children, children. A good man. Two things you are bound to live for your children. Inheritance or liability. A good man liveth an inheritance for his children, children. There are people whose foundation is crying out against them consistently. They are struggling to make a headway, no headway. But today you will make a headway. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever Jesus died for can be stopped. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And if there is anything Jesus died for, scripture says he was made poor so that through his poverty we might be made what? So you must be rich. Amen. I say you must be rich. Amen. I'm not asking you where you are walking. I say you must be rich. Yeah. Now we're going to trace the root of generational poverty so that we can know how to deal with it. Because there cannot be a cause without a cause. Before there is C-U-R-U-S-E, there is C-A-U-S-E. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Before there is a cause, something caused it. Now, what is the cause? 
the cause of poverty has its roots in the in serving number one serving other gods we we'll trace them one by one so that we now know how to deal with them our great grandfather never served the living God. Am I correct? Yes, that is why till date there are families that still have family gods, family altars. By implication, destinies are being mortgaged. Destinies are mortgaged. To mortgage means All these things. Anytime they are ready, we are ready to pay, we will come back. Are you wrong saying now? As they have gone, they have gone to mortgage Nigeria in China's hand. <laughs> and you know the Chinese, they are very terrible. Let me tell you what you don't know. Do you know they dealt with most American companies and industries? They were going to be borrowing money from China. And when they give you a stipulated number of years and you don't pay, they will come and run that organization. They will come and run it until you, are pay, until you pay. And if you can't pay, they will keep running it. They are playing Kora business in the name of giving grant or loan. Is loan they are giving. They dealt with Zambia. Zambia collected loan from them. They could not pay. They came and took over the copper mines, which is one of the major, just like an NPC. They'll be smiling with you and you'll be thinking that they are helping you. They are not helping you, they have targeted something they want to collect. But our God will disappoint them. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So our great grandfathers mortgaged families, destinies. And by implication, everyone in that family has been covenanted to serve that God. No wonder many are experiencing rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Many are going through hardship, growing hardship, stagnation. It is traceable to your roots. There are some families, nobody has made the mistake of rising. But that siege will be broken now. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And by mortgaging our destinies, our forefathers, great-grandfathers, we are paying tight to those altars. And that's the reason why many of you are struggling to pay tight now. It's your great-grandfather's spirit that is worrying you. I'm telling you the truth now. I'm not joking. It's your great-grandfather's spirit that is worrying you. That's why when it comes to that... It, your senses don't pay. If you can call back, if you can remember, those of you that, we are, that had this understanding, they were always giving sacrifice. At times they will say, we are going to do so and so sacrifice, everybody should come home. They want to further mortgage your destiny and your children's destiny. How many of us remember New Year Festival? Some people go still go very soon. <laughs> what you call New Year Festival is not New Year Festival. You are re you are re invoking and re empowering the evil covenants. It's not New Year Festival. Forget the phone. Before the phone, they have gone to the shrines. Am I saying the truth? 
and some people are proud even some believers are proud it's our culture it's our culture and a lie in our bondage it's our heritage we want to preserve our you are not preserving nothing they are increasing your poverty and that is what brought us to the cause of non-titan that's why you, you see yourself you are struggling you you know you have been reading it in the bible oh, but you have vowed it's not your vow it's what was passed over you your great grandfather passed it over you remain as we are as it was in the beginning is now so shall it be forevermore but that seed will be broken today That's why parents that have understood this, they are already starting teaching their children how to tithe. Scripture so says, train up a child in the way that should go, so that when you grow, you will not do what? Depart from it. The first American billionaire, John D. Rockefeller, started paying tithe from five cents. Five cents. Five cents is like our five cobble. Started paying tithe from five cents. And that was how God moved him from one face to another until he arrived at where he is now. Till date, we still have Rockefeller Foundation. Till date. Till date. So the cause of non titan is a product that came from our great-grandfathers serving other gods. And you know, refusing to pay tithe is a cause. God said it in Malachi chapter 3. Let's read it from verse 6 and 10. Malachi chapter 3, from verse 6 and 10. For I am the Lord, I change it not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Bring ye the tithe into my storehouse. My friend, go back. I say, start from verse 6. You are now jumping to verse 10. You think I need a sea road? <laughs> Even from the days of your fathers. What did you see? You have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, say the Lord. But he said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithe and what? Go to the next verse. He now said, Ye are cursed with a curse. So every non tithe, look, tithing is not in volume. He that is faithful in little. Much shall be added to him. I have on my tight record till date. From 15 naira to 25 naira to 50 naira. That's how the thing has been growing. It has never gone down, no. It has still been growing. And it's still growing more. Ye are cursed with it. the same way your father has walked away, you are followed. That is why they are, it is called generational. Your senses will fight it because your father break it so you want to continue it. And hear me? Hear me and hear me where? May you not stop where your father stopped. Yeah. By predestination we are to go beyond our fathers. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Where Abraham's father stopped is not where Abraham stopped. Abraham went beyond his father, Terah. So if you stop where your father stopped, no difference. If you repeat your father's error, it's a confirmation. 
Your father didn't pay tight. You too, you are not paying tight. What makes you different? It's a confirmation that the pattern is following you. Generational causes is hanging on your head. But you must break it today. Yeah. Ye are caused with a cause. So non-paying of tight opens the attack for the devourer. When you are not paying tight, you are fortifying the evil covenant that your father entered. Thereby strengthening your financial bondage. You are strengthening it. That's why Satan will give you reason. Don't pay. Don't pay. Pastor is looking for what else. You know, pastors, they have sweet mouth. Don't pay. Don't pay. And your head will be saying, Yes, I will not pay. <laughs> Your head will say, yes, I, under, I agree with you. I will not pay. <laughs> when these two are in place, the next thing that we follow, we are tracing the roots now. Because of serving other gods, from there, because of non tithing the next thing that we follow is the cause of Satan and his agents. You know, when a cause is upon an individual, a demon is attached. You will have delegates to make sure that you remain as they have programmed you. No cause can work if there is no demonic attachment. So many people are not suffering because of the good they did. I mean, many people are suffering because of the good they did, the kindness they showed. So when an enchantment, a cause is following an individual, hear me, there is a sponsor. There is a sponsor. Satanic agents must be after you. Anytime good wants to take place, pa forces will fight it. Anytime an opportunity wants to open, pa one devil will make sure that that door is closed. Touch my door, I kill you straight. That's why the prayer of die by fire, I will not reduce, I would rather be increasing. That's my own. If I like say amen, I don't know. Yeah. Hear me and hear me well. Until you take care of number two, you cannot stop number three. I remember someone came one day. He said, why is it that any time a door is about to open for me, uh, people will just rise up and begin to fight me? Check it is from your father's house. The thing has been following you from your family. Oh, I had a pathetic story yesterday. I won't mention the man's name. He has risen to the level of a professor at the age of 38 And he has served as a registrar twice. He's about to enter his next level. And a demon was attached in the form of a girlfriend. After he has finished using the girl now, the girl now went and blasted him on the internet and he has been sacked. And if they sack you as a prof by reason of immorality, you may not get another major placement. That's what we call classic deception. Classic. 
Now, which explanation will he give to his wife and children? Which explanation? You know, promotion goes with added money in the pocket. The devil has cheated him out of that one. He cheated himself. He cheated himself. Look at me. Look at me very well. If you are still keeping boyfriend, girlfriend, you go soon enter. You go soon enter. Be hiding and be doing it all. Nobody will know if you are a pastor. Be careful, though. If you are a deacon, deaconess, be careful. The thing go open one day. One day, go open. You know what it means to rise to that level? 38, very promising. Because very soon now you become Professor Emeritus. Now, you have finished using the girl. And the girl played smart. She came from the pit of hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? She came from the pit of hell. When they were doing meow, 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 meow. You know, talk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, talk. After the person has graduated, he now flashed it in. Bah! And the thing went by her. Now he has. When a course is following an individual, an agent is attached. That's why I keep praying any unfriendly friend on assignment against my life, vengeance of God, catch them. I pray it all, even if it's a pastor and it's on assignment to undo me. Oh God, let vengeance catch him. I need a pity. I want to arrive at where God has in mind for me. Please, if you are following me, be careful. Oh. Be careful. May you not be used of the devil because I will pray against you. I'm saying it now so that you hear it. Oh. Please, I'm begging you. If I'm begging you, members too, I beg you. <laughs> I'm telling you. How can you rise to that level? You think of it now. You, you are in administration. Solo. You too, you are in administration. You rise to that level and one small girl, yeah, yeah, you. Go for big party. At that level, what will you explain to your children? That you fell in the laps of a woman? When a cause is following someone, forces will attach someone that will follow him. And look at how he was about to enter his next level. That phase is over. The next thing that we follow when a cause is following someone for poverty, he will be in the company of wrong friends. Check it all through history. People that succeed, they succeed in company. And people that fail, they fail in company. Poor people company together. A wrong company or a wrong friend today is the gateway to poverty for you. Friendship is contagious. Mind what you contact. A wrong friend will introduce you to a wrong spirit. A wrong friend will introduce you to a wrong language that will affect your mindset. No wonder last year when I went to see Bishop, I told him that my friend is coming and he would like to have him protection. Look at me in my eye. Bishop was telling me, look at me in my eye. Is he a good person? I say, yes, sir. I can vouch for him. Say, are you sure? I say, yes, sir. He said, because 
the level at which you are going now, don't keep any person, kick the person out quick. I say it's a good person. It's okay, let him come. And I sent a message, they now brought him in. We prayed for him. Wrong company. Poverty. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. One proof that you have a wrong friend, they don't discuss idea. They tear people. And as they, when they finish tearing somebody before you, they will soon tear you. Write it down, I said so. It's a mark that you are heading for poverty. The moment wrong companies enters, the next thing that will happen to you, you will now carry what we call poverty mentality. Instead of you to grow with idea, you are growing with gossip. You are growing with blackmail. You are growing with backbiting. You are growing with witchcraft spirits, which we call witch hunting. people are telling you is how you can wound somebody or cut somebody down you are like them and you will end up like them if, if they have not been able to tell you do this thing you will prosper do this thing doors will open for you run away run away run away what finished Absalom what fin who finished him who finished Absalom Absalom had the capacity to inherit the throne, but one wrong friend. Look at Numbers, 20, Numbers 13, verse 33. Numbers 13, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight. As what? And so we were in their what? We see ourselves. We see ourselves. To a poor man, nothing is enough. A man of poverty or a man with a poverty mentality will always say, I don't have. I cannot. I cannot make it. My family is poor. What I'm experiencing today, <laughs> now let God do. Oh, this one they say is my new dawn, new dawn. What in the dawn? Not in the dawn. Not in the dawn. In the door, not in the door. As iron sharpened iron. You are either sharpened for good or you are sharpened for bad. So, check it. The people that you are company with now that are influencing. Now, hear me. The essence of friendship or company is for influence. Are you being influenced for good or you are being influenced for bad? As you are seated now, as you are seated now, who is influencing you? Who is influencing you? Because anything you are doing now, somebody is behind it. Anything anybody is doing now, somebody is behind it. Who is influencing you? You are either influenced for good or you are influenced for bad. But hear me, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he do what also what? So he's waiting. And you, you know, you are not only reaping, you're also reaping for your children. The cause of poverty mentality will give back to the cause of idleness. 
Proverbs 4 verse 6. I mean Proverbs 6 verse 6 to 9. Proverbs 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Which have no guard, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Verse 9. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Take a look again at Proverbs 24, verse 30. Proverbs 24, verse 30. I went to the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and needles, had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall, therefore, was broken down. The next verse. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. The next verse now. Yea, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little falling of the hand to sleep. So shall poverty come as one that traveleth, and I want as an armed man. In some cities that have been privileged to live or to work, there's a city where we have lived. Women is the one that go to work for their husband. Their husband are professional in drinking ogogoro. If the woman does not work, the children will not eat and they will not go to school. So you see women doing messing job. There are women that mix cement. There are women that set blocks. I've seen it. And in one of the places, any woman that is a hard worker is the one that will get husband that is not a hard worker. True or false? It's part of the cause of poverty. The cause of idleness. And one even said, you know they should not be your mates, they go they bring up food for the husband. Come they are they make nice. There they talk. <laughs> Cause of poverty. A little sleep, a little slumber. It is generational. The thing has been wired down the line. You don't know what Titan can do. Titan fuels up the reins of divine ideas. When God said, I will open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. One of the blessings is ideas, creativity. We never lack it. It keeps coming. No wonder they say, show me your friend. It's easy for me to know how you will end up when I see the people that are influencing you. It's very easy. You don't need to... I don't need to do prayer and fasting. Whoever is influencing you, let the person keep on. And you to keep on. They say, show me your friend and I will tell you not just who you are, where you will end up. Where you will end up. Do you know why you need to fight the cause of poverty? It limits destiny fulfillment. Because scripture says money answers all things. There are things you want to do now. When money is not around, you feel very bad. Am I saying the truth? You feel very bad. If money had been here, I would have done this thing. Money restricts the places you can go. The things you can accomplish. The places you can reach. Even scripturally, in Zechariah chapter 1, he said, Through prosperity shall my cities be spread abroad. That's why we must fight poverty. Because if we don't fight it, there are people we cannot reach and there are places we cannot enter.
Am I saying the truth? Poverty is not an experience, it's a spirit. <laughs> it's a spirit and it's a cause. So when the spirit of poverty is following a man, these are the things he will begin to experience. Idleness, blank mind, wrong company. It's easy to know that you are, someone is going to be poor when he keeps maintaining poor, 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 poor friends that are only baptizing with poor, poor ideas. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I tell you the truth. I hate poverty. Yo. I hate it. Yo. You must hate it. I say you must hate it. You can't fight what you don't like. What you hate, you will fight. If you hate it, you will fight it. Whether you are doing it with cunning or with style, you go sing catch you. You can't company with bad people with style and not end up with them. There are some things you don't need to checkmate on some people. Just leave them. Lack of understanding makes you to head for poverty. Because you don't know where you will end. But when you understand this truth, now, Tell me if I am lying. Have you truly seen a rich man or someone that has been established financially hanging around with a poor man? Rich, they always hang around with the rich. Why? These are the reasons. No wonder poor people, they always console themselves. <laughs> now so, if you go on one time, so, if you know one time, so, if you don't change our level now, uh, it's not your portion. Amen. I say it's not your portion. Amen. I say again, it is not your portion. Amen. If Jesus truly died for you, your story must change. Do we escape poverty? Now we have known the causes. How do we escape it? If there is a cause, there is also a cure. There is also what? Number one, you must believe that Jesus has ransomed you from poverty. Galatians 3 from verse 13. Galatians 3 from verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. Say me. From the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us. For it is written, caused is everyone that hung it on a tree. The next verse, that the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of what? Let's repeat it again. That the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through what? That we might receive the promise of what? Through faith. Through what? Faith. Through what? Faith. Through faith means you must have confidence on the finished work of the cross. Jesus has paid my price. I will not end up poor. I will end up rich. Not just rich, super rich. Tell your neighbor, super rich. If you believe it, then you must begin to behave it. 
Scripture says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. You must believe it. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I must not end up poor. Romans 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, which walk not after the law, but after what? Now look at the next verse. For the laws of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the laws of sin and what? There is a law at work. There is a law at work. The law of the spirit. The spirit forbids you to be poor. Because you have believed. With the heart man believeth. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have believed. Now hear me. Your redemption is not only to deliver you from sin. Your redemption inclusive is also to bring you out from poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are not just saved from sin unto righteousness. You are also saved from poverty unto what? Do you know what? You have not made the need, you have not given yourself the needed effort to prove this. The only thing you are, we have been celebrating have been saved from sin. Have been saved from sin unto righteousness. You have not shown any proof or desperation that have been saved from poverty unto what? You see, I'm now they are calling Christ. <laughs> what is too big for your mouth will be, be too big for your hand. You don't want to call it riches. Keep announcing it. I am rich. I am rich. It's not just that I will be made rich. I am rich. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You have been saved not only from sin to righteousness. You have also been saved from poverty unto what? Riches. Call it riches. I don't know whether if you call it whether something will bite you. You have been saved from poverty unto riches. So... As scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart. Yes. If you have been saved from it, you begin to think it, you begin to desire it. You begin to desire it. You cannot desire what you don't believe. True or false? What you believe is what you will desire. That's why people that became rich, they didn't just become rich. They desire to be it, so they work towards it. And under the law of attraction, what you don't desire, you can't attract. No wonder you are having, you are only attracting gossipers and backbiters around you because that's what you like. You know, what you like is what you will attract. That's what you are attracting. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are not only saved from sin to righteousness, you are also saved from poverty unto what? Call it out. I don't know whether the thing is biting you. Shout it loud! That's proof one. Proof two. Because the blood was involved. You hear me? There is no ancestral cause that can survive the ancestral blood. If the cause is ancient, it is more it is not more ancient than the ancient of days. Am I saying something to someone? That is why whatever look like a cause of poverty, an evil covenant that has mortgaged your destiny and that of your brothers and sisters and your children, you engage a fight with the blood. You engage a fight. Because scripture says whatsoever my father has not planted. Shall be what? So you take the blood. Just like we talked about grouting. You fire liquid mud. You will be shooting the blood to your foundation. Whatever has kept me on the same spot. And has vowed not to let me rise. Blood of Jesus. Delete it from my roots. 
if you mean it, it will show. I say it will show. And do you know why it will show? He cannot say no to you. Why will he not say no to you? You are the redeemed of the Lord. And scripture says, let no man trouble me from henceforth. For I do what? Bear in my body the mark of Christ. If you truly bear that mark, it must hear you. As scripture says, as soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves. If there are forces that have been delegated to keep everyone poor in your family, let's read that scripture. Zechariah chapter 1. From verse 17, let's read it. Someone need to see it. Because there are forces that keep everyone bound in families that no one can lift up their head. Cry yet, saying, Thou say the Lord of hosts, my cities. Through what? Can you now see why you need this thing? Through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose what? Jerusalem. Verse 18. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and behold, what? Then I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be this? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and what? Jerusalem. Look at the next verse now. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come this to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head, but these have come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which have lifted up their heads over the land of Judah to scatter it. So whatever want to scatter you, you will scatter them. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The blood of Jesus has what we call attacking power. It has an attacking power. And it has never failed one day in its attack. So whatever is attacking you from your base, you can engage the blood. When you engage the blood, man, the enemy must hands up. <laughs> no wonder scripture says, turn ye to your stronghold. Ye prisoners of hope. He said, even today, do I declare, I will rent that double unto all. You will rent that double. Prisoners of hope. There is hope for your tomorrow. Amen. There is hope that you will not transfer poverty to your children. Say amen like a believer. The blood is our stronghold. You can't deal with generational cause of poverty without engaging in a blood warfare. It's a warfare. Why do I call it a warfare? Now, in families, there are snakes that swallows poverty. Yes, I've met people like that. There are snakes that swallows riches. Anytime they want to be rich, bah, the snake will swallow. He say, no, there's a covenant here. The blood is a weapon that has that power to silence their master, Satan. That's what scripture says. And we overcame him by the blood. So whatever wants to keep you and your family poor, you and your brothers poor, you can fight it with the blood. Can fight it with the blood. You never stop fighting it until it starts showing. When it begins to show, man, it's a sign that the thing is working for you. You never stop fighting it. You keep fighting it. You keep engaging it. Whatever has vowed that I will not rise, that is affecting and afflicting me from my roots, by the blood of Jesus, let their hold be scattered. I must prosper. I must be rich. You are engaging the blood. Attacking your base. Attacking your base. You spirit of poverty that run through my family line. By the blood of Jesus, I end your assignment. I end your assignment today. There are also strong men. Assigned to family that make sure that no one rise, just like we've read from that scripture. You need the blood to get them down. You need the blood to get them down. God is telling me you'll be the first to rise in your family. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Number three, we must engage in word declaration. The word power is a dynamite. 
is not my word like hammer and like fire that breaketh. You must be engaging the word. Hear me? You are not poor. Stop celebrating that someone is holding you from the village. If they hold you, break their hand. Break their legs. I give you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversary will not be able to do what? Resist. Not gain say. I give you a mouth. As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves unto me. Hear me? You must keep speaking this thing until the thing starts showing. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me what? Void. But it shall accomplish and prosper. So your prosperity is in your mouth. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. Say them that love it shall do what? Eat the fruit thereof. Number four, you must enter into a covenant of tithing. How many of us does not have tithe booklet? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Be sincere. God knows your heart. God bless you. Hear me? Tithing does not mean that uh, you will start paying when it is 10,000. You can start paying tithe from 50 naira, 100 naira, 200 naira. Are you hearing me now? If you are waiting for when it is 10,000, it may never come. Because if 1,000 is too big for you now, when it is 10,000, it will be too big for you. You say, ah, this is plenty of money. Ah! You will still not pay it. Enter into a covenant of tithing to break the curse. You know, some people will prefer to do 21 days fasting and prayer than to obey tithing. Simple instruction. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity. Some people can go 72 days fasting. Hear me? After they fasting, something still they wait for you. <laughs> something still they do what? Now hear me? Prophecy does not work on a non titer on a non-giver. Some people are only waiting for prophecy. As you go out tomorrow, a door will open for you. They say, Amen! And just to say, shut up, not before you. <laughs> Why? Because you are not obeying the law of tithe. If you are not obeying the law of tithe, how much more giving? You are struggling to give offering. When will you not graduate to give offering to the less privileged, to widows? When will you not graduate to give offering to prophets? When will you graduate? When will you graduate? When will you graduate to giving sacrifice? I hope you know somebody painted this place. One person. That person has collected breakthrough. He has collected a breakthrough. He has collected a breakthrough. When will you graduate? These are the signs to show that you are entering the team. That you are entering generational blessing. Generational blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Generational blessing begins with a step of a covenant of tithing. Offering. Giving to the needy. Giving to prophets. Giving of sacrificial giving. Ah! You have entered. Entering it is not difficult. It's obeying the law. You can't enter what you are not willing to take step. And lastly, is prophetic blessing. Prophetic blessing. Every time prophetic blessings are released, you are being brought into generational blessings. Time we fail us to read it from Genesis 27. I love that verse because it is compounded. He blessed him. He said, indeed, I have blessed him and he shall be blessed. The Lord give you the dew of heaven. The Lord give you the dew of heaven. Amen. And of the fatness of the earth. Amen. And of corn and wine. He said, be Lord over thy brethren. After he finished blessing Jacob, Esau came in. 
He said, I am here with my own. He said, oh, I blessed him. He has collected a blessing. And indeed, he shall be blessed. And he said, my father, is there not yet one more blessing for me? Bless me also, even me also, my father. And the father repeated the same blessing. He repeated the same blessing. When you go, read it all. Read it well. He repeated the same blessing. That's why I want to let you know that generational blessings are provoked. You provoke it. You provoke it. Thank God you have prayed, you have fasted. The next thing now, you provoke it in prayer. Bless me. Bless me. And the moment that is done, I want to let you know, anywhere the great gets to, you will get there. Yeah. I say you will get there. Yeah. Rise up to your feet. I'd like you to lift up your voice right now. Lord, whatever my fathers have done that has brought me to where I am, have mercy on me. Whatever my fathers have done that has brought me to lack, to hardship, to stagnation, to frustration, have mercy on me. Lift up your voice and pray. Every cause of non titan every cause of disobedience, every cause of rebellion to instruction that has brought me to where I am now, Lord, have mercy on me. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Every cause of disobedience, whatever my fathers have done. That have brought me to where I am. Lord have mercy on me. Lord have mercy on me. I plead the mercy of the blood of Jesus. Over my life. Over my wife. Over my children. Over my family. Whatever my fathers. My mothers they have done. Our grandfathers. Our great grandfathers have done. That have brought me to hardship. To lack. To poverty to struggle, Lord, have mercy on me. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy, Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. Before you partake of this oil, if you are not born again, you cannot enter into this thing that we are talking about. But you are ready for a change and you want Jesus to enter into your heart as your Lord and as your Savior. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, just come right now.